have a few. Uh, Ivan try to record us. So, but we have two time, two minutes. Let us wait two minutes for our formal time. Okay. We have. Jorge here. Gaza. But we have not Valodia Rupcov. It is strange <laughs> for me. I believe that he will be. Okay, let us wait a few minutes before our start. Uh, but in, in my time, where is my time? So let us start uh, our mm, our talk. Uh, we will have two talks about uh, the Penleve uh, equations, about non million uh, and uh, about discrete. It is uh, different talks. So let us start. Um, okay, thank you a lot for the invitation. It's a great pleasure to have a talk at this seminar. And I'm going to present um, some ideas that we used to with, uh, that we used in our papers joined with uh, Vladimir Sokolov and Vladimir Red, Vladimir Rutsov and Georgi Sharygin. To these ideas uh, are useful for constructing some non-abelian generalizations of the Pendleve equations. And let me start with uh, this example. Uh, that is the matrix Pendleve first uh, first Pendleve equation. Uh, here we have a uh, matrix variable y and uh, the scalar parameter, uh, the scalar, the scalar independent variable z. And uh, in course to the scalar case, uh, this equation contains uh, uh, arbitrary matrix, a arbitrary constant matrix. And um, so uh, this equation has uh, a lot of uh, pretty nice uh, properties, like uh, it can be obtained by the reduction from the matrix KDV equation. It has a symmetric representation. Uh, so it uh, passes um, the Pnlevi Kovalevsky test. So and uh, under the commutative reduction, so when the size of the matrix is equal to one, this equation coincides uh, with uh, the famous first Pendleve equation. So our aim is to classify uh, non-abelian analogs for the Pendleve equation, for the Pendleve equations, and uh, uh, we select two steps uh, in our classifications. So first of all, we need to construct a, a criterion that allow us to that allows us to uh, find a finite list of non-abelian analogs such that under the commutative reduction, these analogs coincide with a given Pendleve equation. And for the obtained analogs, we need to uh, find uh, the zero curvature representation. Uh, to provide their integrability. So the definition uh, that we use in our uh, papers is the following. So um, a matrix or an abelian generalization of the Pendleve equation is integrable if it satisfies some criterion from item Y1 and admits a zero curvature representation. Um, so my talk will uh, consist, uh, uh, I, I will talk uh, a few about uh, the Pendleve equations and uh, some motivation to study their matrix analogs, matrix on an abelian. Then we discuss about different criteria uh, that people usually use uh, um, in this. Uh, 
still fine. <laughs> yep, now it's fine. So the famous Mendeleev equations uh, um, uh, were derived by Paul Mendeleev, uh, and uh, he and uh, his co-authors uh, have found um, uh, fifty classes of the. Juan, uh, you have the, the the problems too, or not? Only I have. I think that everybody uh, has a problem. Yes, everybody has a problems. Uh, sorry, <laughs> let us wait. Maybe Irina take some another. I think it is our our connection is very bad because we are in the same place with Irina, and uh, I have. Uh, information your connection is very weak and bad can you can you hear me yes yes now we let, can let, so let can me switch off continue of my mm -hmm. okay um so okay um let me continue um here I put uh, three examples of the Penlevé equation, the six Penlevé equation uh, in the, in, that is this guy. Uh, it's a very big equation, but um, uh, in some sense, uh, this equation is a master equation because by the limiting procedure, we can reduce it to the lower Penlevé equations. And, uh, uh, two uh, very small equations, the first Pendeve and the second Pendeve equations. Uh, let me stress that the first Pendeve equation um, doesn't have uh, doesn't uh, doesn't have any uh, additional parameter. Um, so all these equations has uh, have enzymatomic representations uh, have uh, Hamiltonian structure and as I mentioned before they uh, are connected by limiting uh, by the generation procedure uh, that uh, can be done uh, as for the as for the equations uh, uh, and uh, for the lux pairs um a few words about the And uh, one can uh, uh, one can consider reduction. Uh, um, the following reduction to obtain the matrix uh, generalization of the Pendeleev first equation, where uh, A is a matrix constant uh, appeared uh, in after the integration. Uh, of the uh, equation, so this uh, the first Penlevé the first Penlevé equation has uh, uh, can be written as a system. Uh, admits uh, the following isomorphic representation and uh, pass the matrix uh, Penlevé Kovalevsky test. So in addition, uh, one can obtain. Uh, uh, it's isomatromic it's isomatromic representation by using the zero curvature representation of the matrix DV equation. Uh, I mean this uh, condition. So using uh, this transformation, uh, this representation this re representation uh, becomes to this form where matrices A and B uh, can be expressed uh, via matrices U and V. 
And uh, the compatibility condition of these new matrices uh, leads to the first, the, to the matrix Penlevier uh, 1 equation. Um, now, uh, let us discuss about methods. Uh, it was uh, in there, uh, Vladimir uh, Skolov and Sergey Balandin. Uh, they obtained two matrix generalizations for the matrix uh, for the second Penlevier and for the first Penlevier equations. Uh, another method uh, was introduced by Nagoya and his Co-authors they used uh, equantization of uh, Poisson brackets and obtained uh, and um, uh, have obtained uh, three versions of the uh, several versions of uh, quantum uh, several quantum versions for the Penlevier uh, two Penlevier four and Penlevier five equations in the paper by Vladimir Jetek and Vladimir Rubtsov. Uh, the fully non-commutative uh, Penlevier 2 equation uh, was appeared. Uh, here we assume that uh, Y and Z are elements of the unital uh, division ring. And so we mean that uh, these two guys uh, uh, these two guys are different, and uh, the constant alpha uh, is just scalar. Another method was introduced by Kawakami. He considered matrix generalization of the Schrodinger transform deformation. Uh, and um, here, lists, uh, here are listed some result results. Uh, so Different analogs of the matrix Penlevier 2 equation uh, were appeared in the paper by, Vladim uh, by Vladimir Sokolov and Sevola Tadler. Uh, then we, uh, with Vladimir Sokolov, classified um, uh, matrix Penlevier 2 type systems. Uh, then uh, we also considered a fully non commutative uh, analog for the Penlevier 4 equation. Uh, so, and uh, in our last two papers with Vladimir Skolov, we used uh, auxiliary autonomous systems to classify non-abelian Penlevier equations. So let me let me move to the matrix Penlevier Kovalevska test. Um, so, so in this uh, in these methods, we we can we 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 assume that all dependent variables are elements of the matrix algebra, and uh, independent variables are elements are just scalar. Uh, so we use uh, uh, an idea of uh, non-abilization. So every commutative terms can be rewritten in this form. That coincides uh, with the commutative term and the commutative reduction. And uh, here, we, we, here we also use matrix generalization of the Penlevier Kovalevsky test that I will uh, illustrate more later. So, um, an important remark is that this, uh, this method allows us to implement uh, arbitrary constants, arbitrary matrix constants in the equation. In the uh, commutative setting, um, the PK test uh, is um, is the following. So we suppose that we have uh, a scalar order of the m order, and uh, we are looking for uh, we are looking for uh, general formal solutions that contain m arbitrary constants, and these uh, solutions we will call maximal solutions. So we need to identify all, uh, we, we assume that near 
uh, near uh, a single point, our solution has this form. And if uh, k uh, is integer and negative, uh, then we search for each of the equation of the, of, and then we search for each of such um, um, okay and, and 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 then we search for each of uh, such k um, um, m. Uh, uh, arbitrary constants and if for every k there are m arbitrary constants then uh, we can conclude that this test is passed so let me stress that uh, there are some observation uh, observations that uh, uh, connected with uh, the form of the uh, leading matrix coefficients when we uh, will uh, dis discuss about discuss uh, the matrix pk test so i mean that uh, leading coefficient uh, of the laurent expansion expansion uh, is uh, rank one matrix and therefore we can consider only the polynomial od or system of polynomial ODs. Uh, and uh, the main problem in this uh, in this approach is that uh, we need to determine uh, the form of the leading coefficient in the Laurent series. So let us start with the following example. Uh, consider this uh, matrix equation. Uh, it's clear that uh, it has a general formal solution in this form where uh, yeah, then we need to substitute this formal solution into the equation. And we obtain the, the recurrence relations for the matrix coefficients in the, in the Laurent uh, series. Um, so now we, now we need to compute um, uh, arbitrary constants. How to do that? So the first part of the arbitrary constant contains uh, in the uh, in the is equal to the dimension of the uh, of the orbit of uh, GLN action on the residue. So note that uh, the normal the joint normal form of the residue is this one, uh, and since uh, since uh, this equation. Uh, is invariant under the Jolien action. Uh, this uh, group acts on the residue and uh, uh, the part of the arbitrary constants uh, is equal to the dimension of this action, of this section. The second part is uh, contains in the, uh, in this matrix equation. Uh, we need to determine uh, resonances, uh, so namely, uh, we need to see when this operator is not invertible, and then we, and then these resonances uh, should be um, should be satisfied. Uh, so the it means that in the Right hand side of this matrix equation, we have uh, zero uh, two. So uh, our operator uh, has uh, three different um, agent values minus two, minus one, and zero. Uh, so resonance, the resonances appear, uh, the resonance appears only when. Uh, uh, the agent value is equal to zero. And uh, then uh, the possible number of arbitrary constants equals to the sum of the resonant dimension and the dimension of the group uh, of the orbit action. And uh, this number is maximal only in the case when uh, n1 is equal to 1, because one of the arbitrary constants is our, uh, our single point, our, uh, yep, our single point z dot. So 
then we need to um, uh, then we need to verify that all resonance conditions are satisfied and that is true because uh, of the definition of the uh, function f so as a result we found all maximum general solutions of this equation and uh, the test is passed Just a small remark, uh, let, uh, let Y be an invertible matrix, and then equation four, we can integrate. And where lambda, so the general solution can be written in this form, and uh, lambda is just uh, arbitrary constant matrix. Let uh, this matrix can be uh, can be written in this form, and then it's uh, clear that when we consider the residue at the point uh, at the point minus lambda k, uh, it, the, this residue is just a one rank matrix. So the and 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 this in this observation holds uh, for all um, for all um, for all maximal solutions of the matrix uh, equations that pass the uh, Kovalevsky test. So using this procedure, we uh, were able to classify matrix analogs. Uh, for instance, for the open level two equation, it was done in the paper by several Tadler and Vladimir Sokolov. They considered uh, this and that for matrix uh, uh, for matrix Penelope two equation. Uh, it turns out that there are only three uh, non-equivalent instances pass Penelope uh, Kovalevsky test. They are, they are non equivalent with respect to the uh, transposition. So they also uh, found uh, this equation as symmetry reduction of the well known uh, matrix uh, integrable, uh, uh, integrable uh, evolution uh, equations or systems. And uh, uh, this all these generalizations uh, can be degenerate to the first Penelope equation for the matrix to the first to the matrix first Penelope equation. Um, similarly, we can uh, uh, we can classify matrix Penelope four equations. So we consider and that's in this form. Then uh, it, it turns out that the Three non equivalent systems that pass the Pindavia Kovalevska test. And uh, for each of them, we can uh, write down their isomatronic representations, and uh, they are connected with Pindavia uh, 2, um, uh, with the matrix generalizations of the second Pindavia equation by the standard limiting transition. Uh, yep, yeah, standard limiting transitions. Um, another method is uh, related to the non-abelian order chains. Uh, in this setting, we work with uh, uh, associative fundamental division ring over a field of the uh, over the field F with zero yeah, with derivation. Uh, this derivation is just uh, an F-linear map that satisfies the Leibniz rule and uh, just a little notation that for every element from our ring, we put uh, that the D or D F is equal F prime. And uh, we, we fix an element uh, from our ring such that uh, that prime is equal equal to one and for every uh, for any scalar parameter we have that alpha prime is equal to zero. So the main tool in this setting is uh, quasi determinants. Uh, they can be defined uh, recursively by this formula. And uh, in 
in the commutative uh, case, uh, uh, quasi determinants just adjust uh, non-abelian analog of the ratio of the term of the determinant and uh, and uh, principal um, and principal minors. Uh, here are some examples. Uh, for instance, in the case of the uh, mat two by two matrix, uh, we have four quasi determinants. Uh, here, some of them. And in the case when matrix is uh, three times three, we have nine quasi determinants. And uh, one of them can be written in this form. Okay. Um, so um, it turns out that uh, one can introduce non-abelian to other equations that is uh, that are infinite in both direction, in the positive and negative. And uh, by using the quasi determinants, we can define their solutions as follows. So let uh, A and B be two sequences of functions uh, defined recursively by these two equations uh, with arbitrary uh, with arbitrary function initial conditions kappa minus one and kappa one. Then consider uh, these two quasi determinants where uh, matrices. A and B are Hankel matrices. Then for every N and for every M, uh, these two functions satisfy uh, the corresponding non-abelian to the chain. Um, with uh, general initial conditions, kappa minus one and kappa one. Uh, again, just a small example. Uh, in the case when n is equal n is equal to one, uh, for the positive direction we have uh, uh, these two uh, these three functions, and one can verify that uh, these three functions satisfy uh, satisfy the uh, non abelian order equation with n when n equal to one. So uh, the idea to uh, so the idea how to use uh, solutions of the total equation uh, to construct an abelian analogs of the Pendleby equation uh, is the following: we can assume uh, uh, we can uh, yep yeah, we can assume some conditions for uh, initial functions kappa minus one and kappa one. And uh, then uh, these conditions uh, lead to the non-abelian analog for the corresponding Pendleby equation. For instance, in the case of the Pendleby two equation, this analog can be written in this form. And one can verify that uh, if Kappa minus one and kappa one satisfy these two, these two, uh, these three equations. Then uh, solution, uh, then the solution of the second Pendleby two equation can be written in this form, uh, where uh, the second Pendleby equation depends on the uh, on the, on the number n, and Similarly, we can find um, such uh, a fully non-commutative Pendleby 4 system that can be solved via the quasi-determinants. Uh, this analog can be written in this form and uh, under some conditions for the initial functions, kappa minus one, kappa one, solutions of this system can be expressed in the ter in terms of the non-abelian uh, total chains. Okay. Um, let me move now to the auxiliary autonomous systems. 
Um, just a small observation. Uh, we know that uh, all Conleve equations uh, have Hamiltonian structure. This Hamiltonian structure uh, were, was obtained by uh, Akamoto. And uh, the Hamiltonians for the Van Leeuwen equations uh, have the following form. And then uh, one can write down the form of the motion equations. It can be written as, as follows. Uh, so these Hamiltonians are non-autonomous and systems are non-autonomous. It means that the Hamiltonians are not uh, integral of motions, but we can consider auxiliary autonomous systems or related to the uh, system to this non-autonomous non system. It can be written in this form. Here we assume that uh, now uh, u and v are variables or depending on, <clears throat> on t. And uh, that uh, is just a parameter. Uh, so then we uh, can introduce uh, the Akamoto integral. It can be written in this form. Uh, this integral, of course, is related to the Hamiltonians uh, for the Penderby equations. And now, this Akamoto integral is the first integral for the auxiliary autonomous system. It means that uh, its total derivative is equal to zero. And um, moreover, this, uh, the Akamoto integral is uh, Hamiltonian uh, for the auxiliary system 21. So now we, uh, now we are going to uh, transfer this setting to the non-abelian case. Uh, let, let us uh, consider unital free associative algebra with two generators, U and V, over the field C. And we assume that uh, that T uh, kappa sub I belong to unjust scalar. Uh, and, we, in, and in this uh, algebra, we have a derivation. Um, again, that is uh, the C linear map that satisfies the Leibniz rule, and we use uh, this notation for the derivation of our algebra. So now we need to construct uh, non abelian uh, ODE systems. Uh, in the case when we have only two variables, u and v, on, sorry, only two generators, u and v, the, uh, the non abelian system can be written in this form, where f and g are elements of our algebra A. So uh, this system has the first integral, that is an element of our algebra A. If this condition uh, is satisfied. Remark that uh, the first integral is not an element of the quotient space, of this quotient space, and therefore it's not a Hamiltonian for, uh, for this system. So how to define non-abelian Hamiltonian systems? So let us introduce a few notation. Uh, let A and B uh, be two elements uh, of our algebra. Uh, if this guy belongs to the uh, quotient space, then we will write that uh, they are equivalent. The, then these two elements are equivalent. Uh, and uh, a class of our element A in uh, this quotient space, uh, we will call uh, trace of A. So now trace of A is the first integral of the uh, non-abelian system. And uh, we call uh, this system 23 Hamiltonian if there exists 
uh, exists an element uh, from our algebra A such that uh, such that it can be such that it produce uh, such that it leads uh, to the simplectic structure for our abelian system twenty three. So we can let me remark that we can assume that. Uh, this uh, the Hamiltonian in this setting can be uh, uh, we can choose the Hamiltonian in this setting uh, as an element of this quotient space, and then the Hamiltonian is the first integral of the corresponding abelian system. So this setting we will use to uh, to to classify uh, non-abelian Penleve equations. Mm. So let us start with uh, non abelian Makamoto integrals. Um, here a description uh, of our method. So first of all, we need to construct uh, non abelian ansatz for the corresponding auxiliary system for the auxiliary system and the for, and for the corresponding Akamoto integral. Then we need to require that this integral, that is an element of our algebra, should be first uh, integral of the auxiliary system. And uh, this uh, leads to the restrictions uh, on the known coefficients in our non abelian sets. Then we found uh, a finite list of uh, non-abelian systems and the non-abelian Okamoto integrals. And for this finite list, we can reconstruct uh, the corresponding non-abelian Penleve system. Uh, namely, we replace uh, T by Z and reconstruct uh, the function F uh, in the system. Uh, for instance, uh, in the case of the Penleve 2, equation, the Hamiltonian can be written in this form. Uh, and the corresponding uh, uh, system is this one. So we need to construct non-abelian ansatz for the Akamoto integral. So we just replace each commutative terms by the non-commutative uh, and, and under the commutative reduction, uh, this ansatz should coincide with the uh, commutative Hamiltonian. So as a result, uh, the Akamoto integral can be written in this form where uh, a1 and A2 are just scalar. So then we construct an abelian uh, ansatz for the autonomous system. Uh, it's clear that it can be written in this form. Here we have only one additional parameter beta. Uh, yep, yeah, that is a scalar parameter. And from this condition, uh, we obtain two solutions uh, when beta is equal to zero and when beta is equal to minus two. And for these two cases, we reconstruct the corresponding non abelian Penleve system just by replacing uh, T by Z and reconstructing F, but in this case, uh, F is equal to one. Yeah, probably I need to say that for the Penleve six equation, f is equal to z uh, z minus one, and for the Penleve three five and three, f is equal to z, and for other cases, f is equal to one. Um, okay. So uh, our classification results uh, can be presented in the following table. So for each type, except of the Penleve one equation, we can uh, found uh, non-abelian systems that possess <clears throat> non-abelian Akamoto integrals. Um, 
So again, since uh, uh, the commodity integral is not an element of the quotient space, uh, this uh, we didn't uh, found uh, we didn't find any Hamiltonian system. But uh, and but anyway, um, uh, we can we just found some plus of the non linear systems, uh, and uh, there are uh, there are some group that uh, acts on these lists, uh, and this uh, and uh, um, with respect to this group, uh, we can. Uh, Select non-equivalent non systems. Uh, and for instance, in the case of the Pelliver 6 equation, we have only three non-equivalent systems. Uh, because in addition to the transposition, it can be defined as follows. Uh, we have uh, a group that is isomorphic to the S3 group. And with respect to this full group, there are three orbits. Uh, Three, three non-equivalent systems of the Penlevestic type. Uh, on, yep, on the Penlevestic type. And in other types, we just use uh, the transposition to establish the non-equivalent systems. So for, but uh, our, uh, but our, uh, our list uh, contains some known uh, systems of the Penlevy 2 type and of the Penlevy 4 type. Uh, for each of the resultant systems, uh, we can uh, present the uh, isomodromic representations and by limiting transitions, uh, we can connect uh, the systems and their lux pairs. Uh, but uh, during the uh, during the degeneration, uh, some Hamiltonian, uh, Hamiltonian non abelian Penlevy systems can arise. Uh, and um, and uh, the reason why uh, it happens uh, because <clears throat> because the Akamoto integral sometimes turns to the integral of this form that any Hamiltonian non abelian system has. Um, okay. Now, how to find non-abelian Hamiltonian Penlevy systems? So the receipt is the following: we are going to uh, construct non-abelian ansatz for the uh, Hamiltonians and uh, uh, its uh, and uh, and the Hamiltonian uh, and squared Hamiltonian. Let us denote them by S1 and S2. Then we require this, these two uh, polynomials, S1 and S2, are Poisson commute. It means that this condition should be satisfied. This condition leads to restrictions on the non coefficients in the in, in the polynomials uh, S1 and S2. Uh, and then by uh, and, and then uh, by the given Hamiltonian non-abelian that's just equal, that's equal to trace of uh, the polynomial S1, we reconstruct non-abelian Penlevy system. Uh, as in the previous case, we just replace t by z and reconstruct the function f in the system. Uh, so let me illustrate how uh, how this method works. Um, in the case of the Penlevy 2 system, we have this Hamiltonian. So one can verify that there exist non abelian polynomials S1 and S2 such that uh, they coincide with uh, h and h squared and uh, under, under the commutative reduction and uh, such that uh, and uh, these polynomials are Poisson commute. So the non-abelian Hamiltonian uh, on the one hand can be written in this form in this form, but on the other hand, uh, if we take 
if we assume that our Hamiltonian is an element of the quotient space, it can be written in this form. That's pretty simple. So we have no uh, we have no additional parameters in this Hamiltonian in this Hamiltonian. So okay, then we need to reconstruct the Hamiltonian system. Uh, we need to compute this. Uh, we need to compute uh, dH um, just by the Leibniz rule. Just by the Leibniz rule. Uh, in the first step, we obtain this uh, this expression. Then we can uh, make a cyclic permutation in each of the monomial. And uh, since we work in the quotient space, uh, we can uh, we can get the coefficient with the coefficient, uh, uh, with the coefficient uh, from uh, the du and the coefficient and and the coefficient from d v. So the first one uh, is just uh, the right hand side of the uh, yeah and 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 these two and these two coefficients are just uh, right hand side of the corresponding autonomous Hamiltonian system. So then we can reconstruct the Penlevy system from this autonomous system. Just by replacing T uh, by Z. And the resultant system, the resultant Hamiltonian system is the following. Mm -hmm. mm, yep. So, and the classification uh, is the following. We obtain the following uh, Hamiltonians for each of the Penlevy, uh, for each of the Penlevy equation. Uh, namely for the non-abelian analogs. Here, uh, uh, kappa sub by are scalar parameters and uh, in, the, uh, in the Hamiltonians for the Penlevia 6 and for the Penlevia 5 F3 equations, we have additional parameters, beta. And gamma. And gamma. And it turns out that for any parameters beta and gamma, uh, the corresponding polynomials are Poisson commute. So um, now we can uh, select the Hamiltonian Penlevy one equation. And uh, the number of additional parameters uh, in the Hamiltonian systems uh, uh, is the following. In the, in the case of the Penlevia 6 equation, we have two additional parameters. In the cases of the Penlevia 5 and Penlevia 3, we have only one additional parameters and uh, other equation has other, other equations have no additional parameters. So our classification leads to a slide uh, leads to a slight generalization of the Kawakami systems. Uh, we know that Kawakami systems uh, are matrix Hamiltonian systems. But uh, if we uh, if we look at the Penlevy six equation, uh, the Kawakami systems are not invariant under uh, the S three action. Um, <clears throat> yep, and so for for every of the uh, for 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 every of uh, the corresponding non-abelian Hamiltonian Penlevy system, we can present the monodromic leg pairs uh, with arbitrary parameters beta and gamma. But these parameters uh, are inessential in the following sense. Uh, not that the matrix systems of the Penlevy type with scalar parameter, uh, it's really important that kappas are scalar, are invariant under the Jelian action. Uh, it means that we can uh, conjugate uh, our variables by non singular matrix. 
where G is a non-singular matrix over the field C. And then the corresponding quotient system uh, doesn't depend on beta and gamma. In this sense, this, uh, these additional parameters are inessential. So let me conclude my talk. Uh, so we have suggested at least three methods for, for selecting non-abelian Pindlevi systems. Uh, the first one is matrix Pindlevi Kovalevsky test. And uh, this uh, allows us to implement arbitrary constant matrices. Arbitrary constant matrices. Uh, we can consider, uh, we can express, yeah, one can, uh, one can try to express uh, solutions of the corresponding non-abelian, fully non-abelian analog of the Penlevia for of the Penlevia equation via uh, the solutions of the non-commutative total chain. Uh, and uh, and in this case, we can uh, we can um, we can derive fully non-commutative analog, fully non-commutative analog. And auxiliary autonomous systems are really helpful to uh, to 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 work with uh, uh, to 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 classify. Uh, to classify the Penlevia, to, to classify the non-abelian Penlevia equations by considering uh, some uh, some criterion uh, some criterion uh, for the uh, for the integrable systems uh, for the autonomous integrable systems and uh, in this yep and and by using them uh, we can uh, find the full the full class of the uh, of the Penlevi equations of each type. Uh, so every system, uh, yep, all systems obtained by these methods uh, that uh, have uh, isomandromic leg pairs. They are uh, one can verify that they are connected by the limiting procedure. Uh, as systems, uh, systems and their leg pairs, and uh, if we uh, if we uh, look at the systems with uh, Akamoto integral and uh, Hamiltonian systems, uh, they are closed under uh, yeah, they are closed under the degeneration procedure. Um, and here I listed some uh, some some further questions. Uh, so we can try to uh, find uh, such criterion that will uh, uh, allow us to select a finite list of non-abelian Pelliva equations containing all non-examples. And uh, for the cases when we work with commutative parameters, kappas, uh, we find uh, such criterion, criterion and uh, we done uh, uh, and it was done with uh, Vladimir Sokolov, and we uh, hope that we will publish. Uh, we will publish it soon. Uh, one more question: uh, How to interpret uh, these non-abelian systems as simple reductions of integrable systems? Um, probably one of the uh, key problem. How to define the Penlevia property in a non abelian case and how to prove it. And uh, of course, we can try to generalize known results related to the community of Penlevia equations, such that there are background transformations, hierarchies, um, remiss surfaces, special uh, solutions, and so on. So let me stop here and thank you a lot for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions, comments? And, um, let us. I start with the following. With the following um, question: In 
classical mechanics we uh, do not uh, use uh, the um, kovalevsky uh, kovalevsky pinlevet test we mm -hmm. use the so called galois theory uh, with uh, ziegler criteria with a uh, with a uh, ramis lewis uh, theorems and so on. Uh, can we use the uh, Ziegler criteria instead of the uh, Kovalevsky so, test in your case? Uh, uh, thank you a lot for your question. Um, uh, so the Penlevy Kovalevsky test uh, works with uh, non-autonomous systems and uh, how and uh, which type of the criteria uh, we can use in the autonomous cases uh, unfortunately I, I, so yeah i i don't know uh, so we don't we, we did not uh, consider uh, we did not consider uh, such criteria uh, in the autonomous cases so we just uh, consider uh, so some criteria um, for the integrable uh, to to justify the integrability of the uh, systems. In fact, we can use the so-called weak Kovalevsky test in uh, the non-autonomous case too. Ah, uh, ah, uh, okay. Yep, I I don't know about it. Thank you a lot. Yep, we will we will think about it. Thank you. Any. Uh, any other questions, comments? Uh, uh, just, a, just a comment uh, to your question. Uh, I think that the uh, naive application of uh, Pendeve Kovalevska test, uh, at least in the full non commutative uh, setting, uh, meets some difficulty. Uh, I, I had a PhD student uh, who uh, tried and we uh, convinced him to uh, introduce and to check analogy of uh, Kovalevsky Penlevy test for uh, non, non, fully non commutative uh, um, relation, which we called non commutative Penlevy, what Irina uh, mentioned in our paper with Retech. So we had, we had a, a joint uh, PhD student. Uh, he succeeded to, to write uh, many things, uh, uh, Lux representations and he Darbu uh, uh, transformations and uh, quasi determinant hierarchy of Darbu solutions. But uh, it, it looks that like it is principally impossible to, uh, to give some uh, interpretation of uh, Penlevy Kovalevsky test in, in, in full non commutative case in matrix case in matrix case of balandian and sokolov of course it it, it works like well it, okay it, i i uh, say about a uh, 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 matrix case <laughs> in yes, fact in matrix case with with central time yes yes, so, yes. we we can do it <laughs> but <laughs> yes 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 and what about about Ziegler uh, abstraction? Uh, I, I don't know uh, if if there is an analog of Ziegler abstraction in non-autonomous uh, world. Oh, I say about weak Kovalevsky case. Ah. Okay, thank you. Any any other questions, comments? Georgi, maybe you. No, I can. There are not many, many things that I add to this talk. The talk was very thorough and very detailed, actually. I think it's maybe even more than I can tell about. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, no questions. So, uh, 